water. It covers 71% of the Earth's surface. We can't live without it. 71% of the Earth's surface is a lot of water, right? It is. But 97% of that water is undrinkable. Yeah, because it's salty. Don't worry, planet Earth has us covered. It truly is an incredible thing. That 3% that's left? 2.5% out of that is frozen in glaciers, mountaintops, and polar caps. So what we're left with is 0.5% to be shared between 7 billion people, 8.7 million animal species, and 400,000 different species of plants. Studies show that we have enough water for everyone and everything. Like I said, the Earth is an incredible thing. This doesn't mean that we can give full-blown rock concerts in the shower twice a day. We just need to be a bit more careful and use what we need, without waste. Being conscious of letting a tap run unnecessarily, or fixing or reporting a leak. Small changes by everyone can make a big difference. This is what we're aiming to achieve with the Water Be The Change campaign. We're touring the islands with the Join The Drops tour, bringing water conservation education to every town and village in Malta and Goza. Look out for us and come and see how we can help you save more water. We really do believe that together, we can make the change. In the meantime, some more reassurance. Besides beautiful Mother Nature and her natural way of recycling water, Today's technologies allow us to generate more fresh water than nature provides. So far, we're good. We're on an island in the Mediterranean. Our climate is warm to hot and our population is increasing. Again, not to worry. Over the years, our country has invested heavily in water resources management, just for these reasons. Malta has always been a water-scarce country. We've dealt with water scarcity for centuries. Even the Knights of St. John manage their own water resources. They built our iconic aqueducts, for example, to bring natural spring water from one side of the island to the other. So you see, we're used to managing our water, because we've always had to. This is why today, as a country, we're actually at the forefront of water resources management. We started desalination very early on. That's taking seawater, removing the salt, and making it fresh water for us to use in our homes. Did you know that we actually started desalinating water all the way back in 1881? Fast forward to a century later, in the 1980s, and we built our first commercial-scale desalination plant. With our increasing population and spikes in tourism during the summer months, the number of people on our island increases considerably. So you wouldn't be wrong in thinking, where on earth do we get all our water from? See what I did there? Let's put some numbers in there for perspective. The average Maltese person consumes 110 liters of water per day. In total, with locals and tourists, we consume 31 billion liters of water per year. That's billion, with a B, nine zeros. How do we manage? There's a lot that goes on in managing our water resources that you're probably not aware of. First off, we have three main reverse osmosis plants around the islands in Pembroke, Arlapsi and Chircoa. And there's another one to come in Gozo. These are the modern day desalination plants that we started building in the 1980s. And here's a bit of national pride for you. These plants hold the record for the most reliable and longest operating plants in the Mediterranean. Though, if we had to boast about this to anyone, I doubt that they'd be very impressed. Because you see, everyone takes water for granted. And this is what we need to change. One of our largest consumers of water is agriculture. Agriculture consumes 30% of our water every year. We need to reduce this amount of consumption or get it from somewhere else. Enter the Water Services Corporation. They invested in three wastewater treatment plants. That's right, all our used washing water and toilet water is treated so that some of it is clean enough to be discharged into the sea. Besides that, 
19 million liters per day of our wastewater is further treated to a high level of purity and reused for agriculture and industry through the new water project. Take one bite out of a fresh Maltese strawberry around May or a Maltese potato with your Sunday lunch and you'll agree it's well worth the investment. Farming nowadays isn't what it used to be. It has become more of a science with the new technologies helping our farmers grow their crops in the most sustainable ways. A lot of our farmers today use cutting-edge water management technologies like drip irrigation or hydroponic systems. These technologies provide the water directly to the roots of the crops. This is a much more efficient system than watering fields using spray or surface irrigation. So as you can see, over the years, by limiting our use of water to necessity and using recycled water for irrigation, we've actually taken quite a lot of stress off our water resources. Now here's where you can help out. We must take care of what goes down our sinks and toilets at home. See these items behind me? None of them should. They can all be taken to a civic amenity site instead. They're all over the island. Job done, and it hasn't entered our water system. We're also working very hard at reducing water leakages. This is ongoing work because there will always be leakages. Try looking at our water system as though it was the human body. The water pipes that bring water to our homes are like the veins in the body. Water keeps us alive, just like blood does. In fact, the human body is actually made up of an average of 60% water. Inevitably, sometimes things go wrong. A pipe bursts or an organ needs to be treated. We're on it much quicker than we ever used to be. And thanks to your reporting of leakages, this has saved us countless liters of water over the years. So you see, you've already contributed to water conservation by reporting those leakages. Keep at it. Our water system has also benefited from EU funds. These are helping us as a country to reshape the way that we use our waters. In fact, our water resources management has an interesting future ahead of it with the introduction of the Net Zero Impact Utility Project. This will improve the taste of our tap water, which is already potable. This project will also ensure a more sustainable use of our groundwater resources, which brings us to groundwater. What's that? When it rains, water seeps through our soil into small crevices in the rock underground. And it's stored there. That's our groundwater. Unfortunately though, when it rains, a lot of the rainwater that falls on rooftops and streets is lost into the sea. Many homes that have wells direct rainwater in their garden towards the well. Again, another way of relieving some pressure off of our natural resource, as our ancestors have done for hundreds of years. It also reduces flooding and ensures that a lot of our rainwater is captured and used. Next time it rains, have a look around your house or neighborhood and see if there's any way that you can harness that rainwater rather than letting it run. We need to extract as little groundwater as possible. The more groundwater we have, the fresher it remains. The more groundwater we extract, the saltier it gets. Wait, what? Salt, it's underground, what has salt got to do with it? Salt water seeps into the bottom levels of our groundwater, through the rock. Okay, let's take a few steps back. Remember how 71% of the earth is water and 97% of that water is salt water? That's a lot of water pressing down on the seabed. If you suck water out of the water table, the pressure of the sea pushes salt water into the seabed and this seeps through to the bottom of our water table. But here's an interesting fact. Fresh water is less dense than salt water. So if you had to stand knee deep in our water table and take a sip from the top, that's fresh water. Take a sip from the bottom, that's salt water. Because in the rock, fresh water and salt water can sit happily on top of each other without mixing. That's because they have different densities. Like when you Unfortunately, see oil floating on the surface of the sea. Oil is also less dense than seawater. A lot of the initiatives mentioned earlier have happened thanks to significant investment by local government, as well as EU funds. In fact, 
It's those EU funds that have helped produce this documentary. And the Water Be The Change educational campaign. So why all this talk about water? If we're fine with our present situation, why do we need to take care of it? Basically, we mustn't get ourselves to a place where it starts to run out. So a little care by each and every one of us today will help preserve our resources for tomorrow. For some perspective, since the early 1900s, we were absolutely fine with the use of plastic, blissfully unaware of how damaging it was. Now it's everywhere and it's a problem. With water, it's kind of the other way around. It's everywhere, well, nearly. It's always available. Simply turn on a tap, it always comes out. But once it stops, it'll become another problem. By thinking ahead and making small changes like shorter showers, washing your car with a bucket of water instead of a hose, or watering your plants in the morning or late in the evening when the soil is cooler. By simply being aware of water and making our use of it more sustainable, we'll be making a big difference. Together, we can do it. Look at how more aware everyone is of plastic or of managing their waste. That's because we were made conscious of it. As part of Water Be The Change, we'll be distributing water saving kits to all households in Malta and Gozo throughout the campaign to give you the tools that you need to start saving water. We've even set up a National Water Conservation Awareness Center in Rabat. The center is called Ein and offers a lot of interactive ways for you and your children to learn about water, where it comes from, how we use it and where it goes to. At Ein, you can ask for more information about water conservation and you can find out what to do to help our water resources management. You can also visit our website, water.org.mt, to find out more. We're doing all this because we really believe that in order to make a change, we need to work together as a country to better manage our water resources. This is doable. Let's all pitch in and take care of our water, educate our children, make little changes to our everyday lives. It is true that you can be the change that you want to see in the world. A little bit together saves a lot for each other. Water, be the change. This project is part financed by the European Union under the Cohesion Fund, European Structural and Investment Funds 2014-2020.